then we have Chicha and Panda, uh, Chihiro Toya, Yuki Oka, and Maria Nakamura. <laughs> On the side of position, we have Okamashi Kei, Kakotaro, Satoru Hideto, and uh, Nobumasa. The motion before this house is this has been that feminist movement should oppose the policy of male dominant companies, example, Facebook, Apple, paying female workers for freezing their eggs, uh, cryopreservation, and not for methods which support working mothers. Right. Without further ado, I'd like to call upon the Prime Minister to open this debate within seven minutes. Here, here. The, the 
the, in the male dominant company, the, there's not uh, like so many women uh, women workers, so that, which means the women cannot fight for themselves uh, because they do not have enough power and the male dominant company, the male, do not uh, listen to what the women women want and Wait, no and so therefore the we believe the feminist movement is the only actor uh, to uh, count against to the policy of the male dominant company. And secondary Mr. Speaker, so how working mother are suffered from not supporting from the company and why the corporation uh, should uh, support the working mother. <coughs> So, so like, so for example, the Facebook and Apple like such a famous company, and the women want to work, and then they can be uh, employer. But and so they have they want to and they wish to uh, hope to working uh, like more and more, and even if they become the mother, and even if they. Uh, they get married. However, the such the, the company do not support the such such women because um? they the no no thank you the the corporation just uh, only uh, give the one choices for the women uh, freezing the eggs and because they do not support support uh, support the mother and however the 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 women uh, need the right. Needs many uh, many uh, options uh, to keep working. For example, like child care leave or like nursing center and like style. However, the, these, these famous company, even if they have a capacity, but they do not support so because they their policy is just for work, just for women to work. No, thank you. And, and so therefore the. The, if the women become the mother, they have to quit, finally they have to quit their job even if they keep they want to keep working. So we believe this is a problem. And however, uh, we women uh, like themselves cannot uh, like voice out and cannot fight for their right to keep working because they do not uh, they are so weak in the male dominant company and and. And also, the company still neglect uh, their choices, uh, even if the women are like directly voice out. So therefore, the feminist movement, the the like, the big uh, the big group, have to fight for the these choices. And because, as I told you, uh, as I told you, the the we believe the feminist movement is the only actor and can can enough power to fight, fight for the famous company and so the, the, it's necessary to to like empower like stonery so therefore mr speaker um, to to uh, to give the more choices for the all women we we are happy to the horse <laughs> Right, thank you, Prime Minister. Next, I'd like to call upon the Leader of Opposition to open the opposition case within seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Prime So, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what we support on our side of the house of the feminist movement is feminist movement should celebrate this kind of the policy of those corporations. Because we say those corporations are fair for both males and females under that circumstance. The motion states those corporations don't have support for working mothers. We contend those corporations also 
don't have the support for working fathers because those corporations have the policy to encourage those workers to work both for males and females. In that situation, females can have a choice to have children in the future. Males also have a choice to have children in the future. That's the company's policy. It's not unfair. That's why the feminist movement should not oppose this kind of cooperation because it's already fair. If feminist movement opposes this kind of idea, this creates a huge backlash and antipathy from those conservative people within the company. This creates a setback for those kind of progressive movement happening inside those cooperations. We think that's problematic and that's why we oppose. I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, how this creates antipathy towards female movements. Secondly, what the feminist movement should do instead of opposing this kind of the policy. But before that, several points of rebuttals to the previous speaker. First, they said, firstly, they, uh, those companies not listen to females. No thanks. A, if those companies not listen to those females, why did they introduce freezing X support to begin with, right? Because they listen to the female voices, that's why they introduced this policy. However, the problem is this policy is suitable to their company's entire policy, right? To encourage workers to work as much as possible, both for females and males. That's why they listen to. Then there is no problem at all. And B, male dominant doesn't mean there is no women, right? There is also women inside those corporations in the status quo. If female movements do not oppose, there is no radical groups or conservative people to aggressively oppose female to be like executive members, etc. That's why in the status quo, female can be executive. However, if female movements oppose, this creates a radical reaction from the conservative people. They reject female workers to be executive members. That's completely problematic under their paradigm. No thanks. Second, they talk about how working mothers are suffering. Three responses. First, even if they quit their job, they can come back to those corporations. Why is that? Because the uniqueness of the Facebook or Apple examples of this debate are companies who are acceptable to talented workers, right? Because those companies have the uniqueness to welcome people who have the good ability. That's why even if there is no support, they do not suffer because they can easily come back if they have a good ability. And if they enter once, which means they have the ability, there is insurance for those female workers. That's why those female workers, even if they give a birth, they can easily come back. There is no suffering in their city's goal. But secondly, we say that those female workers do not suddenly have child, right? They can control the timing of birth, right? They, they, they do not get raped suddenly in the street. Of course, they can control, for example, how, how to have a sex with their partner, etc. That's completely fine. It's a conscious choice. If they have a child, it's completely informed choice. But thirdly, we say, as I, saw, as I said before, it's fair for both males and females, right? We don't see any problem because also fathers have to quit the job if they, uh, if they have a child, children, if they are uh, if those parents have to uh, be, uh, have to raise up their children at the same time. Therefore, it's not a problem at all from their side of the house. So, moving on to our first argumentation, but before that, any point of information. Okay, what is the goal of your side of house as feminist movement? Uh, feminist movement's goal is to support the choice of females. It's the same yeah, with your yeah. side of the house. However, under our pattern, this creates a setback. This is our first argumentation. So listen. First, how this creates antipathy towards female movements. Our stance is to celebrate female, uh, celebrate this policy. It's already fair and we ensure the choices of the female in the status quo. The characterization of those companies is to implement a policy or entire strategy that employees should work hard during young age and grow up as a businessman, right? The, the point here is this policy is aimed at both males and females. That's why there is no support for working fathers as well. Same with female dominant corporations. As my partner told you from point of information, female corporations also introduced this kind of policy. Why is that? Because also those female dominant corporations have the policy to encourage workers to work as much as possible. That's why the freezing act is completely consistent with this policy and the support for the working mother is inconsistent with this policy. And we say the female and the feminist movement start to oppose this policy we think that's completely problematic because the possibility of future necessary change will also be undermined. 
If feminist movement opposes, which means the conservative people inside or outside corporations, such as stakeholders or, for example, investors, start to have a reaction that the female movements are greedy and they are selfish to that extent. What do we mean by that? Is firstly, because there is no support for the working fathers, those people can easily use the rhetoric that it's unfair, only females require this right for the support for the working mother. Because there is no support for the working father in the first place. No thanks. But secondly, we say those feminist movement can also be criticized by those people by saying because we now introduce the freezing egg, then they require more and more and more. This is too greedy for the feminist movement to, to, to say so. That's why this kind of rhetoric can be done on the inside the company. We say as a consequence of that, those, ex uh, those conservative people start to have the power compared to the status quo. Because now in the status quo, they have no rhetoric to say that feminist is wrong, etc. However, under the other right, they start to have the power to counter the idea that the feminists should have the power inside the corporation. As a consequence of that, for example, executive members can refuse female, uh, female members into these executive board members because it's, it might be dangerous to change the policy only for the female, etc. It might be dangerous to create an unfair situation inside the company. It is changes the policy and entire strategy of the company. That's why this has a justification to refuse those female as a consequence of that. We think that's completely problematic because even if under the other right, some female workers start to have the uh, has have the incentive that to, to make support for the female workers that cannot be done. In the status quo, we on the contrary, we can have the support for those females gradually and organically. What do we mean by that? Is in the status quo, those companies are changing. That's why they have introduced this freezing egg. That's why they have attitude to be friendly to those female workers. That's why if there is no antipathy, the discussion can be easily well under our pattern. The so females can require to write and there is no conservative people to radically say that the feminist people are greedy. We can gradually and calmly uh, proceed the discussion within the company. So if necessary change happens, it's under our pattern. We say that's much, much better. Not, 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 not female movement oppose this kind of idea and may, make it set back within the corporation. So, we say the feminist movement should not oppose this kind of fair corporation, rather oppose unfair corporations which do not have the policy for the females. That's why we oppose. Next, I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to extend the government case within seven minutes. Here, here. uniquely to stand against the oppression by the male society, male dominant society, and to fight for the rights of the women, right? In, in case of like, voting rights, civic rights, equality, gender equality. The reason why feminist movement exists in the first place is to create a combat against the male dominant society, is to make sure that the women's choices, female rights, are guaranteed in that sense. But that's the purpose why it was created, and that's the ideology of people like Julius, Julius Butler being carried through. This debate isn't about whether it's legally correct for a corporation to only have one. This debate isn't about whether corporations have the right to do so or not. We agree corporations have the right to do that. We agree corporations can make that decision to prioritise only one and not have the other. But that's not the debate. The debate is about recognising the fact that there exist certain corporations that only prioritise one factor over the other. What should the feminist movement do based on their values? Both sides in this debate agree that the fundamental value of the feminist movement, as conceded by the leader of opposition, is to make sure and guarantee choices of the individual within society, to make sure the feminist movement is inclusive to all types of women, and that's the value that both sides agree on in this debate. Therefore, the criteria that you need to judge this debate on is which side best guarantees that choice, because this debate is fundamentally from the perspective of the feminist movement. How should they act? What should they prioritise? Should they oppose this? Or should they not oppose this, right? That's the debate, and that's the framework that you need to recognise in this debate. Firstly, they came up and told us that prior preservation was, it, like, came into power because the corporations listened to the female from inside within the corporation. 
That's not, that's not factually untrue. It was the Merck Corporation leaders, people like Zuckerberg of Facebook, or the leader of Google, those were the two corporations that started followed by Apple in like October last year, when they started to increase this. And the reason why they did so was simply to make sure to avoid the female workers from going out of the corporation to make sure that profit is still guaranteed within that company. It's not the female workers wanting this, it's not the female workers asking for this, so that's a complete like, lie from that side of house. But then they said it becomes problematic because the radical conservatives will go crazy. Like, are the response so fucking what? We don't really care. Oh, sorry, video, sorry, what's wrong? The thing is, we don't really care about even if the radical conservatives go crazy, right? Because even if radical conservatives go crazy, why is that a reason for the feminist movement not to support the females who are suffering, who want this choice, who do not have this choice? It, remember 1950s, 1960s, when they fought for the civic rights? They got a lot of oppression from society, they got a lot of oppression from the male dominant, and it wasn't just the conservatives, it was the majority in society. They still fought for it because they believed in that true value of getting individuals and in the rights of the women, right? Affirmative action as well. Based on that characterization, they should be opposing all types of affirmative action because it will be bad for the conservatives, because the conservatives will go mad because they'll be angry. Like, that's not the debate. We don't really care about what happens to conservatives. Because even if that best case scenario, the radicals go really radical, right? We don't care. We still think the feminist movement should support it, and that's the debate. It's not about the benefits, it's not about the problems or the practical harms. It's simply about what the feminist movement should do based on their values, and in that context, within, regardless of how radical they go, which we don't think is really going to happen, but even if it did, that's not really a reason to say they shouldn't do this. Then they said it becomes problematic because you know, people can control when they have birth, they can make a conscious choice. The problem is, even if they're making a conscious choice, that choice that they make is restricted by the environment which they exist in. Things like workplace, and this is the biggest one, right? How, how, how lenient the corporation is going to be to that individual? How willing are they going to be to give you maternity leave? How much money are you going to get when you take that leave? Are there going to be nurseries within your family, within the corporation? How likely are you going to be able to meet your children whilst you're working? All these kinds of stuff is what plays a role in that choice being made. So at the end of the day, even if it is a completely rational and completely conscious choice made by these individuals, the problem is the non-existence of these support for the working mothers plays a crucial role in women not being able to make the choice that they want. Even if women want to make the choice to have a baby, the option of not having any support for working mothers is something that prevents them from making that choice. And that's a scenario which we regret on the last side of the house. Then they said the problem of working with fathers and it's not going to be really like what well, really equal. On the other side, we're happy to support like cases of working fathers and making sure that working fathers have that support as well, right? And making sure they can take the TV and all that. That's not really mutually exclusive. But they said the problem is the rhetoric of feminazis and how females are asking for too much. Number one, that's already happening, but it's shut down. The reason why it's shut down right now is you need to understand why they came up. It came up because of the men's right movement, which came through websites like Nine Gag, which created memes of female fighting and the Ukrainian um, pussy riots and so on. That's the reason why you had that rhetoric in the first place, but because people already do recognize that it came out from like a joke website from Nine Gag and Facebook feeds and all that, people do not really buy into that rhetoric right now. But then, that's a contradiction with that final argument, saying you're going to gradually create support. If the rhetoric already exists, like they say, how are you going to even get that gradual support or the gradual change? Because under that characterization, people are going to be opposed to females, uh, opposed to women, wanting more rights. That's what they said. Under that scenario, how, is Rima, how, is, how are women likely to even get that chance? Yes? Because those corporations have the policy to encourage workers to work as much as possible, even if feminists even try to oppose, that doesn't change. That's why to sit back right the female, that's problematic. Just because it doesn't change, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do something. Just because it doesn't have any tangible benefits, it doesn't mean that you should not support them. Because at the end of the day, like I keep on saying, this debate is about, based on the value of the feminist movement, 
how should they act? On that we say, you don't really care about the POI. But moreover, the question then becomes, how many women and how many individuals on the left side of the house wanting this choice, are they going to sacrifice until they get that end goal? Because you also need to understand that both sides have a similar and shared goal that we want to achieve. A society where women have their rights respected. The, the method of achieving that goal is different. We want a, a society that fights for it, we want a society that stands up for it, and that's what we believe the feminist movement stands for. They're starting supporting a vague, fluffy, general change gradually happening. But then, in order for that to happen, it's going to take 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, during which period individual women and their rights are going to be oppressed, their life is going to be damaged, their lifestyle choices is going to be like, you know, changed because of the environment they're in. And that's something, as the feminist movement, we should not do. So at the end of this debate, at the end of my speech, right, it's about what the feminist movement should do, what values they pursue, and recognising both sides have a similar value and a consensus on what they should pursue, we think we completely take this debate. Next, I'd like to invite GLO to uh, provide a speech within the meeting here. Mr. Speaker, as a leader of the feminist movement, I'm really happy to say to oppose this motion because at the end of the day, we both agreed that we want women's rights to be uh, to be put forward. That's a uh, consen uh, uh, consensus in the debate. So, what, basically, what we should discuss here properly is whether or not we can achieve that goal, as Mr. Speaker. And this is a problem on the government's bench because the previous speaker came up and said we admit. Conservatives could go apeshit. They will start to listen to nothing, Mr. Speaker. And that, I think, is not something that the feminist movement should do. Because they accused us. We, like, are we not doing any? We should be opposing every uh, feminist movement. We should be opposing every affirmative action. We say to them, just because it is an affirmative action doesn't mean we should do anything, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Female, leader, female movement, uh, feminist movement, movement leaders should judge which policies to take, especially when these groups are not unanimous. Uh, it's not like, uh, don't all women don't share the same values. They have different degrees of what rights they want, Mr. Speaker. And I think it, the first priority here is to choose a movement which we think can get the results, Mr. Speaker. And I, yeah. we think, on this, in this case, it is keeping the status quo. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, as a rebuttal, I'm going to tell you why the general change in Mr. Snow's down are happening, Mr. Speaker. And secondly, I'm going to discuss the, about the fragmentation of female movements. Because we tell you, not like the, uh, the Prime Minister answered to my POI, that women can understand and women share the same value. That's not true. There are different degrees of what women want, especially for in, if we are talking about companies like Facebook and Google or Apple, which is uh, basically has a, has a nature of being a venture capital, Mr. Speaker, and you know, they want to get a good salary at a young, young age. And I, don't, I think that female managers in these companies don't necessarily want or, uh, want uh, nurseries in the, in, in the company or these kind of things. These people would opt out of this female movement, and that I think that loses the political power, power to make to create change within these companies. So basically, uh, to get a rebuttal, why do you think changes are happening now? Because they accuse of, Mr. Speaker, that knows that um, men, uh, that's, things are not changing. Men only introduce this policy because they are fear, they were fearing that a lot of workers would go out and that eats into their profit. Exactly, Mr. Speaker. They, uh, they have admitted that conservatives want profit to some extent. So basically, we do, we do have like companies uh, pro, uh, promote, promoting um, childcare policies, which are uh, 
well, uh, in, uh, everywhere around the world. And if these companies prove that that actually provides more benefits than so on, and some companies are actually succeeding, there will be a good chance that in five or ten years, uh, these policies might be taken by Google because they, to, uh, they want to have um, have more profits, and that's the motivation that they have agreed. So I think the best exchanges are happening. Now sit down, and already they have, uh, the fact that this Ponzano policy is introduced is a good uh, evidence that if you, if you keep the status quo, because it's profit uh, profit pursuing policy, there is a chance of a change. So I think, Mr. Speaker, I think it is better than their case, which, is, which they have admitted to bring no change at all, because uh, conservatives don't agree to anything. They'll sit down, and I will extend in my second point more about how the, the female movement itself is going to lose its precious bargaining power, Mr. Speaker. So let's start with this point about the fragmentation of feminist movement. So in the status quo, the reason why we achieve this policy is because the feminist movement has a lot of people uniting against a common, uh, against a common goal, which is to achieve something, Mr. Speaker. And what they did, Mr. Speaker, it wasn't just like, uh, it, was, it wasn't just like male uh, propo promo uh, proposing this and saying you have to accept this or what. It was, uh, in fact, um, Women did things like uh, like uh, spreading out rumors of strike, which would harm the profit uh, profit of the company. And they had all these activities in order to change. They had talked to their managers, the male managers, and all these kind of things would have done before these males imposed this policy, Mr. Speaker. That is the truth. And Mr. Speaker. <coughs> The reason why women united it, because united in this in this policy, is because women wanted something, Mr. Speaker. Especially when we're talking about the top, in the context content of Apple and Facebook, we are talking about women who chose to work very hard, get promoted at a young age, and all these kind of things. And Facebook and Apple came out of this policy to freeze eggs because they understood that it is it is matching their policy of making them work very hard at a young age. But they realized that unfortunately women have a good chance of giving good, good birth to the children, unfortunately, when their eggs are young. So that's why there, is a there was a compromise made within the male executives and the women workers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. And what happens, Mr. Speaker, um, what happens, Mr. Speaker, when we do take this policy is that it actually fragments the power, uh, fragments the party because in order to have like uh, to spread rumors or strike on this something, you need a lot of everyone to join, Mr. Speaker. And what happens, Mr. Speaker? There are people like female managers within Facebook. They might accuse us that these are very small numbers, but they do exist. They didn't exist ten years ago, but they do exist now. So that's one progress. So what happens is that these female uh, managers they have won the interest of being a woman, Mr. Speaker. So they may want some level of uh, progress within the companies in terms of women's rights. <laughs> Secondly, that's it. Uh, yes, sir. Just because that individual woman, the manager, doesn't need the support as a working mother, why does that mean that they're unlikely to, to support their colleagues who may want it as well, recognizing that both women fighting for the rights of women in a male oppressive society? It's because, Mr. Speaker, that was exactly what I was going to explain. Because that when women, the women colleagues itself is probably going to be fragmented in terms of their interests. Because it's not like they, what they have explained, women share the same values. It's not true. I'll talk about, explain the example of female managers. Like, they have the interest of one, with being a woman. Two, they, um, have the interest of being a manager who wants, who cares about the profit of the company. And probably they wouldn't want a policy, especially when you're, they are supporting father leads as well. We, we, they wouldn't want full payment of their salaries of five years working off, and therefore they might actually oppose against uh, against policies about no, introducing nursery, introducing father, father leave, and all these kind of things. And this is important. One, because they lose power in terms of the number, and secondly, these female executives are the ones who even men said. Their voices are worthy of listening, Mr. Speaker. They are the ones who can bring change within the structure of these male dominant companies, Mr. Speaker. At the end of the day, what we have told you is that their policy failed. It isn't something a female, a female movement should take because it doesn't get results. Mr. Speaker, for all these reasons, silent the opposition wins this debate. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call upon the government's whip to deliver the whip speech within seven minutes. Thank you, Mr.
sick when we say from and the argument from opposition bench didn't uh, didn't answer the motion in the first place, right? Because they have to tell us why, like the stance of feminist movement that today's opposition bench have is consistent with the value of feminist movement has been has has pursued in the past. My my turn has told you how like under our paradigm, which feminist movement uniquely oppose this part, the particular companies that only apply only ties the female workers to please their ex at the time and continue continue to uh, to working. This kind of stance itself is exclusive for the, for the certain female workers who want to pursue their career and who want to who want to raise their children at the same time. So that is why at this um in this sense we are, we are very proud to propose. So two questions in this way. Firstly, uh, firstly about let me deal with the, the argument from Aboriginal Men's regarding the internal change uh, internal change argument and secondly about the goal of feminist movement. But before I took um, three points of independent reward. Firstly, here is now suddenly like told us like suddenly told us in our pilot, female managers will go up like some kind of harms or, or so forth. Or, but they, they told us about unity of women about unity and then the female workers is important. But Mr. Speaker, we I have uh, I, I have one simple response. We say that female work, even the female workers who, who are very workaholic, have, have like sympathy towards other other female uh, no, no, female managers who are who is so workaholic. But these these managers have can have the sympathy towards the other female workers who want to pursue their career and who want to like raise their children at the same time. So in this is even in our partner, we say unity. Unity can stand, and their, their argument is do not uh, is strange. And second, secondly, Hidesan told us like supporting for working mothers in, is not necessary because the female workers who are working in Apple or like Facebook is uh, very like centered to to like eager to be to be executive, and they are so workaholic. But Mr. Speaker, that is not the case. That is not true because that is this characterization of, of Hidesan is is too. Like to like uh, is over generalized, over generalized the women's diversity, right? So even if like female workers are enter the Facebook or Twitter or or these big companies, they want they have like they at least they have that like uh they they want to they want to be uh they want to continue the job, continue the job and they want to place the children or give give a bar. We say because that should be coexist at the same time we have to as a feminist women we have to respect those women choices we want to pursue at the same time. They are they are totally neglecting those women choices by the, by their side of the house. And uniquely Mr. Speaker we, we, we have to target this big corporation because that is this Facebook or Apple is very influential in the society. So for if feminist women Support this kind of like, oppressive company. We say that that would be the societal trend that companies prioritize workaholic women compared to the working mothers. We have to stop stop to create this kind of oppressive trends. So we we have to uniquely oppose. No. So and also second qualification from us from outside of us is that the stance from entire opposition bench regarding feminist women is discriminatory. Why is that? Because they are treating like women as exactly in the same way as the as the men. We say we say that the feminist women that today's opposition bench has like stand is all fashion one, like because they 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 force women to be man like they force men like women to to be, to be workaholic as 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 equal to 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 men. We say that is offensive, like because like, for certain women that want, uh, who want to pursue their career and who want to raise their children, we say feminist women must prioritize and protect those choices. Yes, sir. So is it not offensive to say that every woman should follow their rights as, as a woman? Isn't it offensive to say that they all share the same value because they can sympathize just because they have shared the biological sex? Now what we are saying is actually because feminist women should be inclusive towards every single woman's choices, we say our, our parliament can uniquely like uh, uniquely achieve the goals of feminist women that do not like that do not prioritize a certain Choices, but equally treating every single choices as equally same and equal, uh, equally important and equally pleasure. So first, about uh, okay. So first, about the internal change argument, right? So strange, like strange argument from position bench is in our patterns, internal change inside these companies won't happen or like won't, won't happen or possibly decrease. But Mrs. Speaker, assumption of their side of house is actually that women, the female workers have 
like uh, the, these companies can like create create the like system of freezing freeze the system of freezing eggs, eggs thanks to the women's female workers. But that is not the case because you told you how like how like the how the inside of male dominant company these female workers' voices are neglected and they they neglected. So as long as the feminist movement support oh, no, 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 under the Product, we cannot see any kinds of like possibility or even internal change. So that is why uniquely the feminist movement must like must highlight how these companies are how how these companies are like uh, treating women in a bad way. So second uh, last thing about the goal of feminist movement. So they 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 have considered that feminist movement must maximize the choice of women. The feminist movement must respect the diverse lifestyle of the women. At at the uh, we say they because they have conceded. We say they are the other one like they, that, that have inconsistent stuff. Like right? because under their product, they they the as feminist women, the companies, uh, feminist women support a company which restrict the certain women's choices that um they want to uh, they want to work at the same uh, they want to work inside this company and they they want to uh, like give about at the same time. This kind of restrict restriction of the choices is exclusive like exclusive harmful and problematic so feminist women must oppose it and and like and last response for their side of us is like Nabushima san told us like the sales for is totally fine because of if female workers want to come back to these companies they can do so after finishing the raising children. Mr Speaker that is not the case because firstly we they they, they are neglecting the co coexistence of choices of working and raising children and secondly it's very difficult for the female workers to come back inside these companies once they they once they once they left the company. Why? Because this uniquely Facebook or Twitter is is uh, Twitter is is uh the is like innovate innovate innovating technology. So once they leave, left the company, they have massive difficulty to come back. So we uniquely uh, protect the choice of women. So we were proud to propose. Thank you. Guys. <coughs> Next up, we call an opposition whip. To do that, please wait to see within seven minutes. Assume that this debate is about this house believes that such policy does harm more harm does more harm than good for women's rights, maybe affirmative in this debate. But this debate is about not that kind of value judgment debate. This debate also includes such kind of practical policy deciding aspect of women's movement, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's why I think as long as exclusively outside prove that how this policy can tarnish such kind of organic change inside such kind of male dominant company, we think we won this debate. We're gonna talk about two things in my speech. First of all, I'm gonna talk about characterization of the company. And second of all, I'm gonna talk about in which paradigm the choice of women can be maximized. So let's talk about characterization of the company. We think that we would like to celebrate this kind of massive progress in the first place because in the status, in the status quo, still there's many companies who do not such kind of free the subsidizing the freezing eggs in the first place, oppress the women in the first place. But this kind of company like to get Facebook, like to get Apple, still such kind of conceive or the compro compromise this kind of like to the feminist uh, claim of such kind of female worker or feminist women. We think this is a great a great progress in the first place because we can maximize the choice of the women. But we say if you take a look at the context of this kind of debate happening, we think that they, they also face such kind of difficulty to such kind of achieve this kind of great progress in the first place. Because we say they they, they are on the on the one hand they care that such kind of female worker or they care about grand image, but at the same time they need to care that such kind of conservative opposition or the cost was such kind of company's policy or company's principle. We think this kind of difficult decision making is already done in the status quo in this kind of particular company. We think this kind of situation is existing on the very difficult balance in the past places because we say such kind of com companies executive are more likely to prioritize such kind of companies for companies policy companies policy if they, they if they would like to claim this kind of uh, such kind of working mother support because this kind of policy the working mother is against 
their policy in the first place. But we said this kind of company are only considered this kind of con that freezing egg is best suitable for our policy and not to our policy or principle. We think under this kind of concession, this kind of company exists. We think this is a clear context coming from outside the house. We think in this particular context, we think this pro this pro this policy that this kind of, this policy break that this kind of difficult balance inside the company who have the, uh, who have the policy who uh, both both male and female have to uh, should work equally. We think that's why we think this policy not a tarnish that could this kind of situation. Secondly, we think they may, they, they, their main contention is because the women is weak. We, the women is weak in, the, in this kind of male dominated company and they need to and they, they cannot they cannot voice that. We think this is false because firstly we say especially in the context of Facebook or Apple this is result based or consequence based assessment company. That's why they have the equal opportunity or equal environment to such kind of work in the in the past places. That's why it's such kind of unfair such a, uh, unfair situation inside the company do not exist and they have the ability to voice out or they have the motivation to work equally or they have financial capacity to voice out or support their themselves in the past places. That's why say, if such kind of women are weak uh, if we, women are going to such kind of support, support, we think such kind of organic change is naturally happening, like not naturally happening. But we still see that in such kind of company, still, still in this kind of company, that such kind of organic change do not happen like right like, like now, which means such kind of women are not so likely to require this kind of speed, this kind of life in the, in the status quo, because we say such kind of freezing life is such kind of better, they, they themselves believe that such kind of freezing X is better option for them, but for the vast majority of female workers, because we say that such kind of, in the young, they, they principally sympathize this kind of principle of uh, policy of the company that young, in the young age, they, that such kind of both, both male and female have to work harder. In this particular occasion, we see such kind of the analysis of the such kind of women are pressing this kind of male dominated company is obviously false because we say that. Uh, no, that's why I said this is false. Secondly, thirdly, we said this kind of shit that even such kind of male dominant company, in that context, even in the context of male dominant company, especially in the context, in the specific context of Facebook or Google, who, have, who already agree that such kind of freezing egg, or, uh, freezing egg subsidy, we think in this particular context, still such kind of several number, uh, several number of female executives do exist. We think in this particular context, such kind of voice of the women are gathered inside the company. We think this is, that this is why such kind of more flexible decision making in the company or more be better decision making is done in the status quo. That's why I say in the status quo, this is fine. However, ladies and gentlemen, after production exclusively outside the proof that such a kind of failing mechanism in the past places. Firstly, the problem with their, their case is they fail to prove that they fail to explain that any mechanism why this kind of just opposing the second feminist movement can break the can can get such kind of next step or the extra extra progress in the, inside this kind of company. As I mentioned, this kind of company have a difficult balance because we say that they, we need to care this kind of women's right or the brand image. At the same time, they need to care the principle of this kind of company. In this particular context, we think such kind of executive, even though executive agree with such kind of freezing, uh, freezing technology or freezing subsidy, we think this kind of executive may not agree because they need to work because this kind of working mother is against our policy. We think under this kind of circumstances, we think this is from that we think this is no completely no ability coming from their side of the house. And secondly, we think antipathy from the manager or the executive is get get create a setback situation in the past place as my partner clearly mentioned that antipathy of the Venice movement made the most situation difficult than the status quo. We think that's why exclusively outside may create the harm, that's why I think our policy is better. Yes. Based on what you said, the people who become female executives that listen to the women are the female managers, which you also said do sympathize with women. Why, why do they suddenly sympathize when they become executives? We say this kind of, we say not only the female executive, but, but, but also the female, the workers it themselves are not so weaker in the, in the, in the, in the in this particular context of this way. That's why I said this kind of point out can be done even in the status quo. So let's talk about practical consequences. Firstly, that in terms of choice, of choice is important. We agree with that such kind of choice is important and maximizing choice is important. But I get the idea is Idealist, but this is idealistic one. But we need, what we need to understand is we, we need to weigh the choice. We say that in the context of such kind of limited capacity or limited financial resources, human resources, or the feminist movement, we need to prioritize this kind of more important choice for the women. We say that comparatively, 
Secondly, business that kind of and the working model is not so in comparatively not so important to one in the first place is because firstly we said that even timing is different. They can have they or they still have the right to have the children as a result of such a freezing freezing egg after such a retiring after their 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 own time they can they can they can have the baby. We think they are no problem. They comparatively not, not important issue in, in important right in the first place. And secondly, we say they understand. They also understand that can before entering that such kind of Apple or Google or the Facebook. We think they understand this kind of company policy. That even though there's many company who support working mother, that's why in this particular context, why this kind of choice of big man is important. We think comparatively we need to prioritize that kind of other progress and we, we need to prioritize that kind of support of women. That's why this policy is rather harmful to the choice of men. That's why we are very proud to propose. Next, I will call upon the opposition reply to conclude the opposition case within four minutes. Thank you. So, back to you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to talk about two things in my speech. First, what feminist movement should do, which is a big clash in this debate. And secondly, what's going to happen if feminist movement opposes actually under both sides of the scenario? So, firstly, what's the feminist movement should do? The government decides the feminist movement is very radical. They do not care any practical consequence, do whatever they want, as long as it's consistent with the principle of the feminist movement. However, we can tell on our side of the house, it's not the feminist movement should do. Feminist movement should also care the practical consequence as well. Because the ultimate goal of the feminist movement is to bring a successful change, right? As we consider in this debate, is to make a better situation inside a society. Then, if there is no possibility of successful change, of course, the feminist movement should not do that. It's a simple logic, right? Their rhetoric is, are you opposing any affirmative action? Our rhetoric is, affirmative action is not always introduced if there is no possibility of success. That's why affirmative action is carefully carried out in the society. They have to prove why in this case there is a possibility of success. That's the burden of proof of the affirmative side as well. So the feminist movement should also care to practical consequences uh, in this situation. We're also consistent with the feminist movement so far. Second, what's going to happen if feminist movement opposes? Their case. Necessity. They talked about how like those females who cannot work, whoever have to bring children, are suffering. However, at the end of the debate, they didn't picture how harmful the status is because they didn't give us any sufficient engagement to our analysis that they can come back in the society in those corporations because those corporations are acceptable to talented workers and because all the impacts provided by their separate house are based on the analysis that they have to quit the job. However, even if they quit the job, it's not a problem and not impacted from the affirmative bench. We don't see the clear necessity that they support from their side of the house. But secondly, they also didn't explain how they can bring a successful change. They contend on their side of the, uh, their side of the house. Those companies are very, 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 very conservative. Then, what's the mechanism on their side of the house they can change if feminist movement opposes this kind of cooperation, right, Mr. Speaker? There is no exclusive mechanism to say that they can successfully change the situation from their side of the house. But secondly, at the, at the our case is this. Firstly, antipathy is happening. There are two companies' analysis in today's debate, right? There are parallel analyses. First analysis is companies are unfriendly to the females. Second analysis is companies are friendly to females. In both state cases of the scenario, their case doesn't stand. Why? Because if companies are unfriendly, never changes, right? If companies do, are not friendly, even if feminist women opposes, that doesn't change. However, if under our pattern, companies are friendly and actually introducing the policy, listening to the voices of the females, which means they have the room in the status quo without any antipathy or it's empowering the conservative people, those people inside, inside the company, and employees can make a change in the future gradually by having a calm discussion, no engagement from that side of the house. They just said, What's, what, 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 the, what the fact that those conservative people are? We don't care those conservative people. We have to care those conservative people when we have to think about the successful change. That's why if they oppose those kind of change, for example, for the supporting mothers, also doesn't happen. But what we see in the status is fair, right? Because those 
fathers and mothers are very no support from the companies. It's perfectly fine, no engagement again from the other hands. And then, they, then we told you, secondly, from the dictator opposition about the fragment, which is also dropped by the government with. Because some female executives have to prioritize the business dimension as well. Their engagement is not the engagement to our side of the house. It's those workers have to prioritize companies' entire strategy and the policy. What we characterize consistently from the leader of opposition is those companies are companies which prioritize workers working hard from young generation and encourage those workers to work hard. In this situation, a fragment happened with the feminist movement because those executives, those female workers, start to oppose the feminist movement itself. We think that's also problematic. So, for all those reasons, board for the opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reply. Lastly, I call upon the government to reply to conclude this debate within four minutes. Here, here. stands for inclusivity, it stands for the choices of individuals, and fights for a society that is caring and catering to all types of women that exist. It fights in scenarios and areas when women are oppressed, it fights even if it may cause certain backlash, the feminist movement fights on. Because the fundamental value of the feminist movement is that it stands for the women. It doesn't back down to the studs of oppression done by male dominant societies, and that these movements are the only actors in society that can represent these individuals and stand up and speak up for these individuals. It's just why that's the fundamental reason the feminist movement was created fundamentally in the first place, and why that's the, the value that they've like, gone with throughout the cases of civic rights, affirmative action, and in all these instances. Yes, we agree affirmative action doesn't exist in every single corporation, in every single scenario, but we still see a trend where affirmative action is being pushed for, and it's not, it's not the feminist movement opposing affirmative action, it's the society opposing affirmative action, not the feminist movement not fighting for affirmative action to be implemented. That's something you need to recognize, because the feminist movement fundamentally, in most cases, fights for what is good and what is right for the women, right? We need to understand that both sides agree that feminism and that the value of the feminist movement, as conceded by the leader of opposition, is to maximize and prioritize the choices of individuals within society. Therefore, both sides want a society that is inclusive to women where the women's choices are achieved, right? That saying the status quo is enough. Doing nothing is enough. Doing nothing is even better. But let's look at what they told us and let's break down the analysis of why it's good, right? They said you gradually create support because you are gradually having a change. But on one hand, on the other hand, they're saying, there still exists the rhetoric of feminazi, saying women are asking for too much. They're also saying, if from the DSO, right, the perceived feminist leader on that side, they're saying female managers don't sympathize. Female managers only look for profit. Female managers don't want this choice to even exist in the workplace. That, on the other hand, they're saying from the opposition where female executives are people who will listen, but when you look back at that speech, they told us that the female managers are the people who become the female executives. Number one, why does that mindset simply change in that instance the moment they become executives? But secondly, in that context that they told us that the op would try to really create, right? If you still have lots of oppression, lots of people against women's rights in general in that corporation, why is gradual change even going to happen on the best scenario? And even if it was to happen, how long is it going to take? Why should the feminist movement, based on that value, to stand for women, to protect women, take a sidestep, turn a blind eye, and do nothing while they see women being oppressed, while they see the choices of women who want to prioritize women, who want to work, but who also want to have a children as well? Why should they do nothing just because it might anger a few individuals in society? They, that other cause of concern was it's going to fragment society. We did give you a response. We said, just because they're female managers doesn't mean they're unable to sympathize with other people. Because they are women before they're female managers. They're women before they're managers. And when you consider the fact that these are the feminist movement is fighting for the inclusivity of all types of women, and when you recognize the fact that, as I pointed out in my POI, they're willing to support other colleagues because at the end of the day, they recognize what they want is a society which is better 
for women. We agree, maybe it's going to anger some conservatives within society. But we already told you why that's not necessarily a reason to deny this motion. And just by saying status quo is enough isn't really opposing the motion itself either. You also need to understand the fact that from our side of the house, our stance is pretty clear. If fighting for the rights of the women, for individuals that are oppressed by the men, uniquely in this context, which is a male dominant corporation, if that means to risk the wrath of a conservative minority that do not recognize the rights of certain individuals, certain women, just because they're women, on our side of the house, we're happy to be outlaws. We're happy to be against society in general. We're happy to be against the, my, the majority mindset. Because at the end of the day, that oppression is what's hurting the people, and the only way you can actually change it is if you fight up against it. The feminist movement should oppose it, and that's why we win this debate. Thank you,